Hey everybody, welcome to this year's Summer Knowledge Grab Technology Showcase, where I walk through some of the cool services and tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I go through these with an honest review so that you can see what these are all about without necessarily having to go and talk to those salespeople unless you really want to. All right, so the lineup for this year is really exciting. This is the graph technology we're talking about today. And make sure you stick around for this month's showcase because there are a lot of other cool tools that we will be reviewing. So with that said, let's go get started. So hi, I'm Ivan. I come from uh, Croatia, Zagreb, the capital city. Uh, I work at uh, Memgraph as a developer relations engineer. So my job is to create demo applications, code snippets, tutorials, uh, everything and anything that will help developers have a better journey and a better experience. So hi, I'm Katarina. So working uh, like Ivan as developer relations engineer uh, and helping developers out there, working with Memgraph, uh, building cool demo applications and also presenting and different kinds of meetups, uh, organizing our own meetup uh, in Zagreb. In general, so Memgraph is an in-memory uh, graph database, a platform for uh, running graph computations on streaming data as well. So mm -hmm. we don't only focus on static data uh, to run graph algorithms and graph traversals on it, but we also do streaming data. So either uh, through message brokers like Apache Kafka or Pulsar or RabbitMQ, we stream the data into Memgraph and then analyze it, run lots of algorithms and do data science on it. So why I'm showing the documentation side first, because obviously it's the place where you can get all the info you need to download it, install it, uh, how to get started and so on. So and before you, you go any farther, can you let us know why does it matter if this is in memory or not? What's the, why is that special? It's in memory because uh, we are focusing on the real time aspect of uh, graph mm -hmm. analysis. Mm -hmm. So when you use a um, data analysis platform in uh, data pipelines that are analyzing streaming data, you kind of need it to be as fast as possible, uh, mm -hmm. as little as possible overhead. Uh, and that's why real uh, real time uh, visualizations and analysis uh, in memory work the best because it kind of uses a bit more computational resources, but you will get the results way faster. So you won't have yeah. any uh, bottlenecks in your analysis pipeline. It's yeah, and and that's faster. that's beautiful. And I just like to point out that there are different uh, packages you can download. We're going to use the Memgraph platform one as it mm -hmm. contains the database uh, Memgraph DB. It contains the visualization tool Memgraph Lab, with which you can connect to Memgraph and then uh, query the data and visualize the graphs and nice. kind of, it's a bit more user-friendly than mm -hmm. the alternative MG Console, which is just a command line interface. So mm -hmm. you're interacting with the terminal, but that's also um, user preference. And Mage, which is our graph algorithm library, it contains uh, typical graph algorithms such as uh, page rank, between a centrality, and so on, but it also contains dynamic algorithms that are run on uh, streaming data. So they Ooh, don't fine. Uh, calculate uh, everything again from uh, the beginning. So you don't have to go over the whole data set. It just takes the context of the newly created nodes and edges, and it kind of uh, recalculates only the info that is needed uh, that's going to be affected. Oh, that is so helpful. And in if folks that are watching this have not done graph and streaming before that might be a great place to go and experiment because if you're not uh doing streaming data correctly um or if you're not analyzing that that data correctly you could be getting a very very large bill in the mail from whoever is hosting anything yeah. that you're doing yeah that's a good point for example if you run the page rank <laughs> algorithms on millions of nodes and edges each time a new one is each created, time oh yeah. no <laughs> that, that's a lot of overhead. You kind of yeah, need to do it in batches. Yeah, and that's also really good to mention because you mentioned the in-memory part, and now this is the dynamic algorithms part. So both of them yeah. are really great for streaming, graph streaming analytics. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So here, one option is Memgraph Lab. That's the visual uh, user interface we can use. MG Console is the command line interface. And you can, of course, connect with various drivers from different programming languages as well. Uh, for this demo, we are going to use Memgraph Lab because it's kind of the prettiest one. Yeah. Uh, easiest way of running it is when you start Memgraph Platform. 
which we started in our terminal. It also tells you that Memgraph Lab is running on localhost 3000. So it's a web application and we included it in this Docker image. So when you visit localhost 3000, Memgraph Lab will be up and running and you can connect to the database instance. So this is it. This is the basic screen you get. Here we can execute Cypher queries. We can take a look at what other queries have been uh, already executed. Uh, we can save them in different collections uh, if we are executing them frequently. Here we have a list of query modules that were loaded. Uh, query modules are custom procedures uh, we write in a memgraph. And the point is that you can extend the Cypher query language with your own uh, traversal and oh, algorithm nice. implementations. So all the algorithms in the Mage library are these custom query modules, and they are either written in Python or C++ or Rust. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, flexibility on that yeah, side. Yeah, the good thing yeah. is uh, that you can actually write your own query modules, and also now you can write it inside the NumGraph lab. So that's like a huge new feature that we had. <laughs> And, and I have to say that's really promising to see because quite often, <clears throat> you know, everything that we have in the graph space is, is very useful. The, the, a lot of the primary stuff that we have to do is, is there, but there's always the exception. There's always that very specific business need and having this not as a sidecar as like, no, we know, we, we acknowledge or you're acknowledging that this is a common practice and you're building it into your your actual tool is pretty cool to see because it means you're you're listening uh to your users and you're building it into like their normal workflow which is great yeah uh the idea was also for example if a user has a specific request uh, and it's pretty hard to integrate it in the, the core database engine because again it's written in c plus plus and mm -hmm. we need to perform a lot of heavy optimizations to keep the amount of ram that mm -hmm. the database consumes uh the lowest this means we can just uh, extend the whole database with a new feature using these custom procedures mm -hmm. so we don't have to touch the source code of the database but mm -hmm. we can create something externally and then hook it on the api let's just open up all the predefined data sets we have in memgraph lab and let's choose the movie lens data movie sets. movie <laughs> Uh, it's a pretty small one, so it shouldn't uh, take a lot for the download to happen and for the import to finish. Okay, so now let's take a look. Now we have uh, 1,646 nodes, uh, almost 6,000 relationships. Uh, we're using around 200 megabytes of RAM. And now we can actually start exploring something in the database. So here, this is a pretty simple feature when we can just generate a graph schema to see what the graph looks like. Mm -hmm. um, this is the movie lens data set. So it has users which are rating movies and these mm -hmm. movies are of genre. And each user has a name and an ID property so we can ID them. Uh, the movie has also an ID and a title property and the genre only has a name. And each rating also has a score, mm -hmm. uh, I think from one to five, uh, which makes sense. And the genre relationship shouldn't have any properties. Yeah. Yeah. And also this uh, 100 pre uh, present thing, uh, like you can put, yeah, it's telling you that like each of your node has uh, that property because it doesn't have to have that property. So it's actually like the developer who work on this ask us whether this is a useful information. And we told them it is because sometimes you miss some kind of data in one node and you want to have everything there. So it can be useful sometimes. So yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And it's it's that level of abstraction from the folks that are building out or I mean, with this one, you didn't build out the the data set, somebody else did, but it's giving you that information so that you don't have to figure out what that main use case was. It just gives you that information you can make decisions on. Yeah, yeah. it makes it a bit easier, but everything helps. And Ivan, I think you can also like uh, show the whole graph because this new rendering engine, I think it will render it pretty fast. I mean, like uh, previously uh, we had a whole different engine 
uh, mm -hmm. for rendering and it was a bit slower i mean it wasn't easy to like build everything it was built with d3 uh, js oh, library yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but now it's built on top of Canvas with D3.js, so it's a lot faster. And now you have this, uh, like you see how much time is left, and that's wow, it. Wow, cool. And when you choose some node, uh, it highlights the uh, relationships that are connecting it to another node. So I think this is a, this is, I mean, you haven't seen the previous, maybe, yeah, version, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's a pretty so big So there's improvement. improvements, we can see yeah. it. Yeah, it's cool. a big improvement. And I like how, how so are you getting the color coding and all of that from the data set? Is that something that you set up or is that something you can customize? So uh, you can customize. Yeah, Ivan, you can show, yeah. <laughs> Ah, so I see. we created our own language called Graph uh, Style Script GSS, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a plain of words on CSS, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. style sheets. And um, here we can define how to how to style all the nodes, all the relationships, everything between them, um, all of these data sets. Uh, that you know what? I like I like this though. So so let me just stop here for a second because I talk about visuals a lot on on the channel for a very good reason. Because look at that thing. If if you can go down a little bit to see the the visual graph, it's so big. Like you need to be able to visualize this to to make any you know higher level sense of it. But what I liked about the the way that you can change it, your your GSS, like your CSS, is it's it's something that's going to be familiar to a UI developer, yes. and it's not yeah. just it's not just filters, right? And again, if if for a, I think it's all of them that I've seen. It's mostly just like things that you can change on the screen, but you're not seeing how the actual like code would look. This is really cool because you could even just take this and because you've modeled it so closely to CSS, you could hand this over to a UI developer and they could use that to make your interfaces better. I actually use in my day job a graph very similar to this for customers to, to utilize and we use right. UI developer. So this is really cool. I don't think I've seen this before. You're trying to extract the component for visualization, uh, mm -hmm. kind of did it already. And mm -hmm. now the plan is to also make it open source and available. So mm -hmm. anyone can just take uh, the React or either the plain JavaScript component mm -hmm. and put it into their own app uh, without having to open MemGraph Lab. That's or great. This. So yeah. they can just input it and connect to the database. And then they will have all of these uh, options, but from their own source code, from their own. Also, you have like uh, like that little options on the right side of the visualization uh and down on the right second. oh yeah okay it's hard <laughs> okay this oh yeah so this is like for d3 uh like mm -hmm. you can change different kind of forces within the graph and of course since it's the whole graph it has has to do a bit of rendering right. and but when it's a smaller graph you can play a bit with it so yeah it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun for me. <laughs> I can definitely try it out with a bit smaller graph. For example, I can limit the number of nodes and relationships that we're gonna show. Okay. There we go. And now enable physics on the left, maybe. Uh, yeah. Good point. Now yeah, the now it's moving. moving. <laughs> oh, nice. Now we have a jiggly graph. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So so the other thing and, and and maybe maybe those watching will laugh at this too, but this gives you the sexy factor as well. Like if you're talking to your your stakeholders and they're like, what is this graph thing? You know, this is not showing you the power of graph necessarily, but it does. I'm telling you when you have something that like moves around. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a cat, you know, when they're playing with like a toy. That's that's yeah, kind of exactly. like stakeholders, <laughs> right? You need so to catch really their cool. attention somehow. <laughs> right. So I like yeah, it. I completely agree. This is a feature <laughs> that was absolutely necessary. I agree. I agree. Even if it's not, and I, I'll I'll say this to the audience as well that. That is not going to be useful if you're doing analytics on this or if you're like really trying to get the insights from it. But I, I can never stress enough that getting your stakeholders to pay attention to what you're talking about when you start talking about a graph, if this is going to help you keep their attention, that's a good thing. 
<laughs> yeah, why not? Let's just uh, order all of the movies we are going to return. And again, let's use a li reasonable limit. Is that M dot title? M dot title. Of yeah. course it is. Okay. And we can also return the data in the form of tables. Nice. So it's a bit more neatly displayed. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can check it out. We can also, of course, um, return specific properties as well. So the visualization gets a bit easier to handle. But then we don't have a graph and the graph um, view is unavailable because we are just returning properties. So just keep that in mind. So uh, let me just show you MemGraph Playground. If you just want to play around with it, with graphs, with Cypher in general, you don't have to install anything. You need, don't need to learn anything. You can just check out our lessons and sandboxes. For example, uh, nice. short, shortest path in Game of Thrones. Yeah, uh, Game just of Thrones. just click on the lessons. <laughs> uh, it's connected to an instance. It's read-only, so no one can mess up the data. Mm -hmm. And here you can just run the queries, check them out. Um, change them, see how they perform. I also wanted to show you how you can uh, connect to MemGraph and use it from Python because mm. we are very much focused on the Python ecosystem. Uh, we, because a lot of data scientists are using uh, different Python libraries or yeah. Jupyter notebooks to perform stuff, we kind of developed GQL Alchemy, our own um, object graph mapper which can be used to connect to MemGraph. And then you can, instead of writing Cypher queries, execute Python code. Let me show you a demo application that uses MemGraph on uh, real-time streaming data. Uh, Katarina and me created this uh, demo, Twitter Network Analytics demo. It's a pretty simple graph streaming application. It consists of a few services, as you can see on the architecture. Uh, we have a data source, which is Twitter. We scraped uh, Twitter for tweets that contain the hashtag Christmas. Uh, and then uh, the messages are sent via Kafka to MemGraph, with, which acts as the stream processing engine. MemGraph calculates the page rank value for the messages. Uh, it does a community detection algorithm, which places the messages into clusters. And then the information is sent to a Flask Python server and via WebSocket, uh, it's visualized in a React client. I can open it up in my browser on the address localhost 3000 and we shall see nodes being added to the graph instantaneously. Yeah, here they are. So this is our graph. It's being built at the moment. So messages are being streamed via the Kafka server into MemGraph. Uh, as you can see, the radius of the nodes changes. That's because uh, each time a new node gets added to the network, uh, the PageRank algorithm has to recalculate the values for some of the nodes. So as you can see, they are changing dynamically. The same applies for the community detection algorithm which uh, colors the nodes based on the cluster they belong to. So, for example, these four blue nodes, they belong to the same community. Um, it's the same thing as with the PageRank algorithm. Once new nodes get added to the network, uh, some of the other ones are recalculated as well, and the front-end client uh, colors them accordingly. So, as you can see, this is currently the largest community of uh, nodes that belong to the same cluster. And here in the PageRank example, you can see that the node with the highest PageRank value, so the most influential Twitter user at that time, was the user with the username World Music Award. So yeah, uh, we can also visualize the graph in a MemGraph lab. Uh, let's open it up. So as you can see, there are currently 55 nodes and 47 relationships. This number keeps changing because uh, new nodes are getting added to the network approximately uh, every few seconds. Let us check the graph schema. So it's a pretty simple one. Uh, there is only one type of node, which is user. Each user has a rank property. Um, 
and a cluster property. These ones get added uh, when the page rank algorithm and the community detection algorithm calculate the results and then they saved, save them to the nodes themselves so we can use them later on for visualization. The whole graph and memgraph lab so let's use cipher i am gonna match all of the nodes and all of their relationships and return all of them but this visualization is kind of plain so let's apply a style in memgraph lab that's a bit more appropriate for this data set and yeah that's what i'm talking about we can maybe tweak the settings a bit so the graph looks a bit cleaner. Let's say that the link distance is a bit larger and that a collision radius is also a bit larger. And yeah, this is much more intuitive.